Now that we know implicit differentiation, we can determine a few new derivative rules that we didn't have before. The first one we can do is the derivative of natural log of x. So we're going to write this as y equals natural log of x. Now we don't know how to take the derivative of natural log of x, but we do know how to undo natural log of x. So if you do e of both sides, e to the y equals e to the natural log of x, then we know that e and ln undo each other. So we get e to the y is just x. Now e to the something is something we know how to take the derivative of, and of course we know how to take the derivative of x. So we're going to take the derivative of both sides of this equation in terms of x. Using implicit differentiation, the derivative of e to the y is e to the y times the derivative of y, because of the chain rule, so that's dy dx, and that's equal to the derivative of x. Now the derivative of x in terms of x is just 1. All right, so now we need to solve for dy dx, right? So we get dy dx is equal to 1 over e to the y. Okay, so this looks great, except for that we want a derivative rule for natural log of x. So our answer ought to be in terms of x. So do we have a way of writing e to the y in terms of x? Well, it turns out we do. e to the y is actually equal to x. So what we're saying here is that dy dx is actually just equal to 1 over x. So that's a new derivative rule. The derivative of the natural log of x is 1 over x. Now that we have the derivative of natural log, we can find the derivative of a to the x for some constant a. So this is something like the function 2 to the x. Now we looked at this problem earlier in the course, and we were able to discover, using the definition of the derivative, that f prime of x here has got to be f prime of 0 times a to the x. So we should expect our answer to be something of that form. We just don't know what this constant right here should be. So let's see if we can figure it out. If we write our equation as y equals a to the x, and then we're going to take the natural log of both sides to undo the exponential equation. And that helps us because there's a log rule that you might remember from before, from pre-calc, that says the natural log of a raised to the b is equal to b times the natural log of a. And so we're going to use this rule and apply it in our problem. So we're going to have natural log of y is equal to x times natural log of a. And here this natural log of a is just a constant. For in particular, if we were looking at 2 to the x, this would just be natural log of 2, which is some number. So now we have natural log of y, we know how to take the derivative of that. We have a constant times x, we know how to take the derivative of that, so we can do d dx of both sides. Alright, so now the derivative of natural log of y, we know the derivative of natural log of x is 1 over x. So the outside function is natural log, it gives us 1 over, and we put in the inside function unchanged, so that's y, times the derivative of the inside function, so that's dy dx, the derivative of y with respect to x. Now on this side we're going to take the derivative of x times ln of a. You might be thinking that we should use the product rule, but since ln of a is actually a constant, we can just use the constant multiple rule and say this is the constant ln of a times the derivative of x, but the derivative of x is just 1, so this is ln of a times 1. So now it's pretty straightforward to solve for dy dx. We get y times natural log of a. Just like before, since we're kind of trying to make a derivative rule for a to the x, we don't want to have y's in our answer, so we need to figure out what y is. Here it says y is a to the x, so we're going to substitute in dy dx is equal to a to the x times ln of a. And that's exactly what we 
expected before we started, it should be some constant times a to the x. And it turns out that that constant is ln of a. So there's another new derivative rule. Now there's one more that we can determine now that we know both the natural log and a to the x. And that's how do we take the derivative of log base a of x. So remember what that means. Log base a of x equals y means that a raised to the y equals x. So that's exactly actually the first step we want to do when we try to find this derivative because we want to write log base a of x equals y in terms of things we know how to take the derivative of. We now know how to take the derivative of a to the y and how to take the derivative of x. So we're going to take d dx of both sides of this equation. Using implicit differentiation, we get a to the y. We know that a to the anything is a to that something times ln of a. And now the chain rule, we still have to take the derivative of this inside function y, so we get dy dx equals on this side, we're just taking the derivative of x with respect to x, so it's just 1. Now we solve for dy dx, so we get dy dx is equal to 1 over a to the y times ln of a. And the very last step is again, since our equation was given an x and we're trying to find a derivative rule, we want to go back to x. So a to the y we know is the same thing as x, so we rewrite this as 1 over x times ln of a. So those are three new derivative rules that we can use now when taking derivatives that involve natural log, log base a, or a to the x.